Welcome to another episode of the Physique Formation Podcast with your host, Denver Stain. This week, I want to talk about longevity in the sport of bodybuilding, weight training, building muscle, dropping body fat, and things of that nature. And in this episode, I'm actually putting it on YouTube as well. I've had a lot of requests, people constantly saying, hey, you should film your podcast, you know, things like that. So, hey, here it is, I'm doing that. So for the first time, I'm gonna navigate between talking to my microphone, talking to the screen, and also staying on point with my um, with my notes along the way. So this actual um, topic was a request from one of my uh, followers on Instagram, which is cool. Thank you for that. They wanted to know about longevity and the changes that you make over time due to your age around weight training in particular. And this is actually a great question and great topic because I did meet somebody yesterday at a cafe who was telling me that they were greatly focused on dropping body fat. Uh, they're a bit old, older now and they've been greatly focused on dropping body fat for the most part because that was kind of the guidance they got from a lot of people that they met. Like, hey, how do I lose weight? Well, it's mostly diet, 90% diet, 80% diet, 70% diet whatever it might be, everything was revolved around diet. And then he told me that he was gonna try some appetite suppressants and things like that. And I said to him, you know what? Like, you're doing a lot of things around diet, but what are we doing around your training, right? It's never too late to start going to the gym, just to be clear. It's never too late to start lifting weights. And it's there's such an empowering feeling to actually get stronger over time. And also build your confidence, right, within the gym, environment, knowing what you're doing in the gym, and uh, just overall being more capable physically. So that was quite interesting. I met that guy yesterday, we had a conversation, I had the request of this topic, so everything's just working out the way it should be. And um, right now on the screen here, if you're on YouTube, you can see it, I've got a photo comparison of Ronnie Coleman in his prime Mr. Olympia peak condition, and then also Ronnie Coleman quite a few years later, or maybe just, you know, more in recent times now, where he is not quite the same. Now, I take a lot from Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman was a huge inspiration to me as a up and coming natural bodybuilder. I would watch him at five o'clock in the morning. Every morning I would wake up, have my pre-workout, watch Ronnie Coleman for 20 to 30 minutes while I got ready for the gym. And he gave me some crazy motivation. That guy was super strong, super focused, super dedicated, always just on point, you know, just on point, like super motivating. So Ronnie Coleman is someone who was a power lifter. He was a natural bodybuilder as well. Then he became obviously an enhanced bodybuilder, became Mr. Olympia and just killed it. And when I was up and coming, this was a 2005, 2006, and seven, he was the man. He was killing it. And every single year, he would beat another bodybuilder named Jay Cutler. And Jay Cutler was not as hardcore as Ronnie Coleman by any means. His training was a little bit more boring in my in my perspective. From my you know perspective, I would watch his videos and think, okay, well this guy is like using the Smith machine on back squats. Ronnie Coleman's back squatting crazy weight and leg pressing insane weight and deadlifting insane weight. And Jay Cutler keeps coming second because he's just not working hard enough, right? That's kind of what the perception was. It's kind of what how, how it looked because Ronnie Coleman was just so hardcore. Anyways, fast track 10 years later, maybe more now. Ronnie Coleman is actually has actually had multiple surgeries and hip replacements. He's chronically in pain every single day of his life and it's just something that he lives with. He still goes to the gym, he still trains, he's still committed, right? Uh, Jay Cutler is thriving from a health perspective. His body is healthy, he looks great, he's fully functioning. There's no surgeries happening for Jay Cutler, and Jay Cutler did actually end up winning Mr. Olympia. He did end up beating Ronnie Coleman. And it just goes to show that you don't have to rush it, you don't have to be hardcore. You have to put the work in, right? You have to be consistent. But what I learned from Ronnie Coleman was actually train like a bodybuilder if you want to be a bodybuilder. Train like a powerlifter if you want to be a powerlifter, right? Kind of train towards your goals and don't 
feel like you have to be hardcore to get the best results possible. Now, I don't ever want to be in a wheelchair, just to be clear. I don't ever want to be physically limited as I get older. So we need to be very smart with how we train. We need to very, be very smart with our approach, our effort, and being progressive by nature um, in the gym. Not trying to do one rep maxes, not trying to do personal bests, not trying to go into the gym and be you know, ego focused, but more so just focused on progressive overload, improving over time. So Ronnie Coleman has taught me a lot in life. Initially, he taught me how to train like a beast and just you know, focus. So many times I'd be in the gym and I'm just thinking in my head, yeah, buddy, lightweight baby, you know, this kind of stuff, which is what Ronnie Coleman would typically be shouting and um, gotta dig deep, gotta dig deep. You know, that's one of his favorites, one of my favorites from him anyways. So Ronnie has taught me a lot over time, initially all positive things, and then in hindsight, on reflection, how to be a little bit smarter with your training. And if you ask him, because he's spoken about this many times, if you, and I've met him multiple times as well, if you ask him, he will say he doesn't have any regrets around what he did. What he did, in his mind, how he trained and what he did got him the outcomes that he was able to get. And he was the freakiest bodybuilder on stage and, and probably one of the best still in regards to complete fullness, thickness, size, conditioning, like just everything was insane. When he hit a back double bicep, as he would always say back in the day, lights out, like it's done. But, you know, speaking about longevity and age around training, we learn, we learn from people, right? We learn from our own personal mistakes over the years. And then we also learn from people that we, you know, look up to or we kind of watch their journey and, see, and think, okay, well, you know, that kind of worked out for this person. That looked, that was really good for them, but this was not so great. So let's maybe take this approach instead and see how we go. But anyways, let's just start with the basics on like, how does muscle growth occur? And kind of like, because people often say, oh, you know, I'm too old to build muscle or, you know, I have all these other issues going on. So in reality, muscle growth occurs through a process called hypertrophy, right? So hypertrophy is the process of increasing the size and strength of muscle fibers. And yeah, I'm just reading this off my notes to keep it nice and simple and straightforward. It happens when we engage in resistance training and challenge our muscles to perform more than they used to, right? So that's progressive overload. We lift the weight, we adapt to it, we get stronger, we do it again, a little bit heavier, we adapt to it, we get stronger. So the muscle fibers then repair and adapt to the stress, like I just said, becoming stronger and more, sub more substantial over time. And that's pretty straightforward. It's like most people understand how muscles are built and hypertrophy just means increase in size. Now, how does training for muscle growth change with age? Three things that happen, maybe four, when, as we get older. Number one, there is going to be a down regulation of your metabolism, and that is typically going to be around lifestyle changes in my personal opinion and experience. A lot of the time, and this is for fat loss as well, a lot of the time your metabolic rate will change because you're, you're less active, you're sitting around more, you're driving more, your responsibilities are just different. And typically for a lot of people, they're not going to the gym, they're not being as active, they're not doing things that they used to do when they were younger, so therefore they're general output, the calories burned across the day is reduced. In some cases, people aren't eating enough protein. Uh, you know, that has a thermic effect as well, which con contributes to your total metabolic rate as well. Sometimes you're not eating enough fruits and vegetables. So all different things come into play with your metabolism. And you can say across the board, these things are valid for everybody. But as we get older, I do believe that there is more of an impact there because our lifestyles change, our responsibilities change as well. When I was 16 years old, I had minimal responsibilities. The only thing I cared about most was going to the gym. I would go to work part-time, I would play Call of Duty online part-time, and I'd go to the gym and, and cook my meals basically, and make sure I got good sleep. And everything just ro revolved around the gym basically. Uh, we don't have that luxury anymore, right? A lot of us have a lot of responsibilities and that is going to greatly alter our ability to be more active, go to the gym, do all these different things, right? So I actually go out of my way to be more active by tracking my steps every day, as you guys would already know, and that greatly improves uh, my total energy output. So calories burned across the day, 
and then obviously improves my metabolic rate, right? And keeps things on track the way I want them to be. So a reduction in your metabolism is going to be the first thing, which is going to potentially hinder the rate of fat loss, maybe hinder the rate of muscle gain along the way as well. Another thing that definitely happens is hormone levels change. So as a man, your testosterone levels start to decline as we get older, it's quite normal. Uh, as a female as well, uh, PMS, things like that. These things happen, right? So there is gonna be a down regulation in the ability to perform well, to build muscle. Your body's gonna be a little bit less sensitive towards doing these things. But we can optimize our lifestyle, our nutrition, our training, our sleep, our stress management to help with this, right? So to kind of just maximize our natural body's ability to produce testosterone and things like that. But yes, as you get older, there is gonna be a down regulation in hormones, right? And that's just something that we have to kind of live with. We have to understand that. Uh, the third thing is our muscle fibers become less sensitive to the stimuli that promote hypertrophy. Now that's one that I made a note of based on some research that I did, but I haven't seen that for myself. But what I will say is that they do say that as you get older, a higher protein intake might be suitable, right? So it's possible that your body doesn't utilize protein the same way that it would when you're younger. And also if you have been training for a long period of time in your life, so you've been lifting weights for a long time, you are less sensitive to building more muscle tissue, right? Uh, but that's not really the focus here. The focus is longevity in the sport, longevity in um, lifting weights, building muscle, things like that. So in general, if you have been following this healthy, fit lifestyle where you've been going to the gym most of your life, you've built a great foundation, right? You've built an amazing base. And now we're just looking to maintain that, right? We're maintaining that over time, not looking to build any new crazy muscle, um, but you know, that's kind of what we're trying to do, just maintain. And one final point is that it is possible that it's easier to lose lean mass as you get older as well. So we do have to be a little bit more mindful of that as well. Again, with all these things that come into play with the metabolic changes, with the hormonal changes as well, uh, with the slower rate of muscle gain, uh, there is going to be that concern that, hey, you're losing muscle because you're not eating enough protein, you're not going to the gym, you're not doing all these different things. If you have the lifestyle set already, you're good to go. The reason why this podcast right now is kind of hovering between someone who's older and wants to go to the gym and someone who's just trying to have longevity in the lifestyle that they already have is because I'm trying to answer this question from the actual you know, listeners um, question on longevity in how does training change as you age. But I'm also thinking about the guy that I met yesterday who doesn't lift weights at all and is older and I feel like he should be adding that to his life. So it's kind of two things that I'm trying to like juggle here. And when I met that guy yesterday, I was telling him that resistance training is essential for muscle growth, right? You can follow a diet or you want to, to drop body fat to get leaner, but you need to lift weights. You need to incorporate some kind of resistance, whether it's body weight, whether it's push-ups, whether it's whatever, you need to create a stimulus to grow and develop muscle to get stronger. Uh, regardless of your age, it doesn't matter, right? So what can we do to maintain muscle mass as we age? Three things. One, resistance training, going to the gym consistently, whether it's three days a week, four days a week, or five days a week, irrelevant. Going to the gym consistently, progressively overloading, aiming to get stronger over time. Prioritizing a high protein intake, prioritizing vitamins and minerals along with that. So fruits and vegetables offer a wide range of vitamins and minerals and then prioritizing recovery. So sleep and stress management, huge across the board, right? So if we can focus on weight training, eating towards improved health, and then also focusing on recovery, you're gonna be great and you're gonna get some great outcomes, great results. Doesn't matter how old you are, those three things are key. So let's touch on resistance training first. Obviously, this is speaking for someone who hasn't been going to the gym at all and we wanna bring that back into their life or bring that into their lifestyle. Focusing on compound movements is gonna be the best bang for your buck. So we got squats, we got bench press, we got overhead press, bent over rows, things like that. Now these movements will utilize a lot of different muscles at once to really be efficient and get your whole body working as a unit 
and get stronger over time. However, these exercises do have a little bit of cause for concern because they are a technical movement that it can be challenging to do. So you might start with a machine-based movement instead, like a hack squat, right? Like a machine chest press, like a seated row for your back, like a seated shoulder press or dumbbell press even uh, for your shoulders. There are different ways you can train the muscles, right? And you can utilize machines, you can utilize barbells, you can utilize dumbbells, you can even do body weight as well. But resistance training is going to be simply one of the, the biggest foundation to maintain and build muscle over time. When it comes to your protein intake, we want to make sure that you're eating enough protein every day. So two grams per kilo of lean body mass or total body mass or your goal body weight. These are three different options you could take in order to ensure that you're getting in adequate protein every day to maximize the recoverability from your training and your lean mass retention, which means holding onto your muscle that you've got and then potentially building new muscle at the same time, which in most cases is going to require that you eat enough food along with that. And as I touched on before, vitamins and minerals are key components of overall health. Vitamins and minerals actually allow your body to utilize bigger nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in a way where it'll provide more energy. So protein, so carbohydrates and fats, I should say, they provide energy, but they re rely on vitamins and minerals or the presence of vitamins and minerals to actually do the job as effectively as possible and, and give you that energy supply. So with a low amount of vitamins and minerals in your diet, you're not gonna have the same level of energy uh, regardless of how many calories you're eating or what, you know, what you're consuming. So that's important to note. And then on recovery, recovery is huge. So we really wanna focus on getting in enough sleep. Uh, you know, you can do active recovery, going for walks, maybe going for walks on the beach, that's great. Massage, uh, relaxation, and just stress management tools around improving your sleep and uh, lowering your total stress. So those three things are going to be fantastic for anyone who's looking to build and maintain lean muscle, drop body fat, and these are things we need to prioritize a lot more as we get older. And it's definitely things that I've prioritized a lot more as, I got, as I've gotten older. My training age right now is 20 years. I've been going to the gym lifting weights consistently for 20 years. That's a long, long, long time, right? That's a long time. And, um, you know, I had another question uh, in regards to this podcast because I asked on Instagram for podcast ideas. And I had another one saying, what's the longest time that you've been off track with your diet and your lifestyle? What's like, you know, what's the craziest thing that you've done? And I'll just answer it right now. So last year I went to Europe for 10 weeks and I got a one-way ticket and I just went everywhere. I wanted to explore the world, go to some countries that I hadn't been after, you know, we couldn't go anywhere for a period of time. And I pretty much went to the gym. In my mind, I was going to go to the gym four days a week. Going to the gym was such a, such a tough task at that point in time because you have to find a new gym. You got to look at the opening hours. Obviously, you got to look at the cost. You got to look at the distance. Um, and you also want to explore the world and do other things, right? So I was going to the gym three days a week to start with. And then towards the end of that trip, I was going to the gym once or twice a week. Um, I was trying to maintain my protein intake. My sleep was not great because I was just with people all the time. I was drinking alcohol, you know, every other day. No, I wasn't getting drunk or anything like that, but I was going out and having a drink with people and eating delicious food all the time. And within that 10 week period, I also went to Croatia on a cruise and the food that they provided there was horrible and we all got the same amount of food. So I was greatly reducing my protein intake. There was no gym on that boat either. Uh, so I had to get off, when we got off the boat every night, I had to go and find a convenience store where I could get protein shakes, ready to drink shakes. I would order chicken if because we would just get off for dinner each night. So I'd get a high protein meal for that. I would do push-ups and stuff like that on the boat. So I would say that period of time last year for 10 weeks was the worst time that I've ever had in regards to muscle building, uh, you know, weight training, things like that, good sleep, minimal alcohol over the last 20 years. So that was the worst time. And I came back from that and I was encouraged personally to get back on stage as a bodybuilder because I wanted a complete reverse. Looked in the mirror and thought to myself, wow, you don't even look like you lift, right? You don't even look like you work out because we can lose that look really quickly. Um, so that actually encouraged me to switch gears and get back on track as a bodybuilder, which is great. So 
That answers that question. I've been very dedicated for a very, very long period of time. So to wrap this podcast up, it's never too late to have a lifestyle change and improve your approach to your training, to your nutrition and to your recovery. Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter how old you are. But as we do get older, we start to, and we're in this game for a long time, we do start to be smarter with our approach. So I'm not out there trying to do a one rep max on a squat or a bench press or a deadlift when I'm trying to be a bodybuilder. Regardless of bodybuilder or not, I'm generally not trying to do that much at all because yeah, I am getting older, right? And I don't want to have that high risk of a potential injury, which is going to affect my ability to train later. So we do start to train a bit smarter. We definitely use something called the reps in reserve method or the RPE scale, where we're typically training, you know, two reps away from failure across most exercises. It's very rare where I'm going to just go all out as many reps as possible to complete failure, especially on those technical exercises that I listed. I might reserve that for more isolation based movements. Uh, So we do train a bit smarter. We do definitely, definitely prioritize recovery more and stress management more. I will generally prioritize my sleep and my mental health more than I will prioritize my training or my workload or my social life these days. Whereas years ago, when you're younger, you can kind of get away with just having that balance of going out on the weekends, having a fair amount to drink alcohol wise, and then just smashing it in the gym on Monday. And I remember when I was younger, I was in my early 20s and I was really strong and I'd have guys around me saying, oh, wait till you're in your 30s, you won't feel the same, or your 40s, you won't feel the same. And I would just be laughing like, yeah, whatever, whatever. They were right. They were right. I'm not going to lie. They were right. But what adds to that, as you get older, you're, like I said earlier, your um, responsibilities change quite a bit. And these guys that would tell me these things, they obviously had work, like full-time work. They had family, they had kids. They had all these other things they would just have to rush to get into the gym and get out. So obviously their body's not primed to perform at its best. So when you're younger, we do want to capitalize and maximize our output, our potential and build a great foundation. Uh, But then as you get older, we still want to do the best we can, but prioritize um, safety, recovery, consistency, and taking a smart approach around your training and everything will be totally fine. Like I said, we don't want to be an example where people look back and say, wow, like that guy was a beast or that girl was killing it. And then things just went bad. And for me personally, I do have quite a few different injuries that I've, you know, kind of gotten over time. All of them, almost all of them could have been avoided. They could have been avoided. And in hindsight, as an athlete, typically when you push that little bit extra because you think you're going to get that 0.1% improvement, there can be a higher risk than reward as well. So sometimes, you know, you push that little bit extra as a power lifter and you get it and you achieve a a new one rep max and you celebrate that because that's the goal. Or that little bit extra push might result in an injury of sorts and then that causes regression and pulls you back quite a bit. And that's just the general you know, lifestyle, or I guess as an athlete looking to be your best. So there is that consideration as well. But anyways, guys, that's my podcast for today. I hope you found it informative. And I guess the general outlook on this is you're never too old to focus on improving your health. Weight training is important, superior above all else when it comes to physical activity, improving your protein or increasing your protein intake and improving your diet overall will greatly help with recovery across along the way as well and uh, aiding muscle growth and also fat loss and obviously recovery modalities can be very important they're crucial the three pillars right weight training nutrition and recovery slash stress management are the three pillars of success so if we think of a stool that you want to sit on if you don't if you're missing one of those legs you're about to fall over That's how I like to think about it. So if your training is not optimized, your nutrition is not optimized and your recovery is not optimized, then you're not going to have a stable stool that you can sit on or stand on. That's not going to work out for you. So that's my podcast for today. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me. You can find me on Instagram at Coach Denver Stain. Hit me up on my website, physiqueformation.com.au and I'll see you guys at the next one.